Stay home bakers. Amazing baguettes are completely achievable in your oven at home without using a pre-ferment, without resting your dough for days. In fact, you don't even have to knead it. Let me show you. Roll it! Disclaimer alert, a baguette is a true craft. That means it's gonna take a little bit of practice to get things bang on. That's just life. Do it and do it again. So let's make things easy for ourselves by making our baguettes with a straight yeasted dough in three to four hours, start to finish, and minimum faff factor. The only thing here that could be considered a faff is the fact we're gonna stone bake our baguettes because stone baking really is a big contributor to the characteristic crust and burst of a baguette. If you've never done it before, you're about to find out just how easy stone baking is. And if you have done it for, well then I guess uh, you already know. Cut to the table. First, start off with two large mixing bowls. In one, weigh out half a kilo of strong white bread flour and 10 grams of fine sea salt. We'll get four decent sized baguettes out of this dough. Weigh seven grams of instant or fast action yeast or 12 grams of fresh yeast and add that to another bowl with 350 grams of room temperature water. Whisk it and let it soften. My room is 21 degrees C, which means my water is 21 degrees C as well. And if yours is the same, you can expect the same results in terms of the speed of the puff. Obviously, if it's cooler where you are, things are gonna take a little bit longer to puff. If it's warmer where you are, things will puff up a little bit faster, but you already knew that, didn't you? Now I tip the dry mixture into the wet and mix everything together with my dough scraper. Mix for a minute or so to make sure there are no dry areas, no particularly wet areas, and everything has come together nicely. When you are happy, cover the bowl with a cloth and set aside for 30 minutes. Now this is a no need recipe, right? But that doesn't mean we can just leave it alone and do nothing to it to transform a dough into a baguette. Instead, what we're gonna do at various intervals is give a little stretch and fold, transforming that shaggy mess into something that's bouncy and smooth and silky and really, really responsive. And that will help us get that bust open on the top of our baguettes. After the first half hour rest, your dough will be looking kind of bumpy, perhaps a little bit sticky lightly dust the table and use your dough scraper to unstick the dough from the bowl and turn it out onto that floury patch. Move it around a little bit just to make sure it's not sticking and if it is, just shoot a little bit of extra flour underneath in those sticky areas. Pick up the edge with your thumb and forefinger, lift it outwards and fold it back over the top. Keep working your way around the dough doing this same action 12 to 15 times and so long as you keep all the folds in one place, i.e on the top, you'll end up with a nice ball. Roll it over, seam side underneath, dust the top, place it back in the bowl and take a look at it here. You'll see that even now after this short rest and the folds that you've just done, you'll start to build a little bit of structure. Things are getting smoother, more responsive and bouncier already. Cover again with the cloth and set aside for a further 30 minutes rest. This second fold will be exactly the same as the first, only this time you're gonna do things slightly less. The dough has puffed up slightly by now, so lightly dust the table again and turn out the dough upside down. We always do things the same way, okay? We always turn it upside down and put all the folds in the same place and then rearrange it, smooth side back up for the following rest. Press slightly with your fingertips and fold back up into a bouncy ball. This time around, 10 folds will be enough to get there. Roll over again, smooth side up, dust the top, cover with a cloth and set aside again for another half hour. You'll notice that each time that you do this, your dough becomes stronger uh, and bouncier and smoother and it's exactly the same with any no knead bread. Because each time you come back, the gluten will have developed further and you are building tension in order to enable it to carry more gas as it puffs up. And this is evident in the final crumb structure of your baguettes. After this second fold and rest, your dough should have clear signs of puff by now and it's ready to divide. Use your dough scraper to turn it out onto a dusted table and put your empty bowl back on the scales. If you like your baguettes all exactly the same size, weigh your dough 
as a whole and divide it by four to get the exact weight each piece needs to be. Then use the flat side of your dough scraper to cut your dough into four weighing as you go. Mine worked out 215 grams each. You can add or remove a little piece of dough along the way if you wanna get them all exactly the same size. Line them all up on your table ready for the pre-shape stage. The pre-shape is the shape before the final shape. That's why it's called pre-shape. It adds another layer of structure and starts to build the tension, which is another thing contributing to that lovely burst on the top. For baguettes, we pre-shape uh, long, like a sausage, because the final bread is long. If we pre-shaped it into a tight ball, shaping from that ball to a baguette is gonna be tricky. So take a piece of dough and gently roll it up into a loose sausage. Our aim here is to create that tension on the outside, create a little bit of structure without losing the gas inside. Because the trapped gas is yet another factor contributing to that burst on top. Line them up seam side down, dust with flour and cover with a cloth where they will rest and relax for a further 15 minutes ready for the final shape. In the next part of this video, you will see me use a few special pieces of kit. Nothing major, just some wooden baguette pills, some cloths and a green yet. And you can buy all these things if you like individually from bakewithjack.co.uk forward slash shop where there is also a baguette bundle if you wanna get everything together in one nice pretty parcel. I'll leave the link underneath for that. And don't forget if you're a patron, uh, you get a discount on all bundles. I know, pretty sweet. After 15 minutes, your pre-shaped dough sausages would have puffed up very slightly and relaxed enough for you to commence your final shape. This part is a true craft. Try not to beat yourself up if you don't take to it naturally straight away. Some people do and some people really don't, but that's okay because you're gonna do it again and again and again until you crack it, aren't you? And every time that you do, you get a little bit more of a feel for things. Use a dough scraper to release a pre-shaped piece of dough from the table and flip it upside down onto a little dust if you feel that you need it. Now with my fingertips, I'm just going to lightly press down the bottom half of this baguette, leaving that top piece nice and plump. It's that piece that is the foundation of our baguette, the beginnings of our sausage in that piece. We're gonna roll down right to the bottom in stages. And because the baguette is long, we're gonna start from one end to the other like this. Take your thumb and forefinger and pinch the top like that. We're gonna roll it over slightly with the side of my left thumb, just press that down enough to stick. You might need a little bit of dust on your thumb here just to make sure it's not sticking to the dough, but don't try not to dust all over your dough, otherwise nothing will stick to where you want it to stick to. Use the side of your thumb, dip it in some flour left on the table and go from there. Continue along the length of the dough with your thumb and forefinger, picking a piece, folding over and pressing it with your other thumb all the way to the end. Now you can see we still got this platform here, although it's slightly smaller than before, we'll continue rolling it down. Again, from one end, roll it over and press it down work all your way from one end to another. And we got a last little piece here left over, which will be the last time we fold. Roll, press. This time we are creating that seam underneath our baguette to hold everything together. Now with your palms, roll it gently to even out. With a side bit of your palms like this, a little bit of pressure will help you get those pointed ends if that is what you so wish. And there's your baguette. Done. It's all too easy when you are making baguettes at home to roll them a little bit too long. One, because it's so pleasing uh, to roll it. And secondly, because that's what you're expecting to have, like a big long baguette that you can carry all your over your shoulder down a Parisian high street. But don't get carried away. Remember the size of your oven. Don't make things too big to fit onto your oven shelf. Use yourself a ruler. Aim for around 30 centimeters to fit nicely onto a standard baking stone. Or if you have a Baker Jack baguette peel, no longer than the blank area up to this line here. This time, dust your baguette really well, roll it all around in the dust, and I'll show you how to make a couche. Your baguettes are gonna be baking freestanding, right, with no support on your baking stone. So what you need to do is provide it with a little bit of support as it puffs up, and the way we do that is to make a couche. Get yourself a tray, I have these that are used for pizzas and prep, and line it with a cloth. You can go to town and buy a big, gigantic, solid linen couche cloth for this, but I don't feel like it's necessary at home. I line mine with a Bake With Jack natural cotton proving cloth that many of you probably have at home. Dust it well with flour and place your dusted baguette on there seam side up. Next, you're gonna make a nice generous pleat in your cloth in between that baguette and the next to make sure they all buddy up next to each other while they're proving up, supporting each other as they rise, but they don't go far enough above the pleat to 
stick each other together. As you go along shaping, add your baguettes to the couche separated by a pleat. Let's watch the final one from a different angle in ASMR mode because it's just nice, isn't it? your dough into bed now where it's going to rest for 45 minutes or so and while it is resting half fill a kettle full of water and get your oven to preheat at 240 degrees C that's 464 degrees Fahrenheit with the baking stove in the middle shelf and underneath that a deep roasting tray ready to make steam. Keep an eye on your dough here as it proves up because as much as we do want it to puff up we don't want to get too delicate because if we do get too delicate it might collapse when we try and score it or move it or whatever. It's it's important to leave a little bit of push left inside of our dough because in theory that remaining puff, that increase in volume will happen as our bread dough hits the heat of the oven on the stone underneath. That heat and the final push will bust open that top crust. When you're ready to bake, click on your kettle to boil and get your peels ready to make the transfer. Take a peel and place it in between your baguettes. You can pull the cloth to separate them out so you've got plenty of room to work with and flip it upside down onto your peel. Remember our baguettes are proving seam side up, so they're already upside down. By flipping them upside down, you're actually flipping them back over the right way where they belong with the seam underneath. Do them all and line them up next to one another. The most important thing here, here is that they are not sticking to the peels. So pick them up and give them a little bit of a shimmy just to make sure they're not stuck. Next, we are gonna score our baguettes nicely with this. It's a razor blade. It's that grignette I was talking about earlier. This scoring before loading is quite a precise process and I feel like it probably justifies its very own standalone video in the future. Uh, if that's what you want, let me know. Along the middle line of the dough, make four or five cuts with the corner of your grignette swiftly at a very, very slight angle from one end to the other. Make sure your cuts overlap one another slightly. Don't be tempted to go too diagonal because that will stall the puff. It just won't open up that way. When they're all done, take them over close to the oven to remove the faff factor when you're trying to bake. Line them all up next to the oven, next to your boiled kettle ready to load. And here we go, open up your oven. I can pull out my shelf here, which is quite snazzy, isn't it, to show you. Slide your baguette's naked bum onto that stone like this. One, two, three, Four. Don't stress out about where you're going to put them if they're going to be too close together or whatever because once they're all in and that bottom part has kind of sealed off on the stone, you can use the side of your peel like this to kind of shimmy them and push them about and make sure they're all dead straight as much as you'd like. Then pick up the kettle, tip the water into your tray below creating a big sizzle and burst of steam. Shut the oven door and set your timer. Bake your baguettes for 15 to 20 minutes to get that real nice burst and that real nice crustiness on the outside. And here they are from the oven to the rack. Golden, crispy, the crust is bursting open where we cut it beautifully and just listen to the crispiness. Inside, you can see the wonderfully open crumb structure, and that is down to the fact that we didn't need the dough. In stretching and folding instead, we looked after the natural bubble structure contained within the dough, while giving the dough the strength to enable it to continue to puff up. And the result of that, the result of our care and attention throughout that process is the softness and lightness of the crumb encased inside a crispy exterior. Yeah. I'll pop the recipe for these baguettes in the description box underneath, as well as a link to that wonderful baguette bundle if you so wish to purchase. And I made these baguettes without a poolish pre-ferment, without overnight rest to make a point that can completely be done. The true craft of a baguette lies in your own two hands and that comes with practice. 
It's far easier to emotionally deal with creating a slightly ropey looking baguette if it only took you three to four hours than one that took you two days. Do it and do it again until you crack it and feel free to add those additional steps as you have more experience and feel comfortable to do so later down the line. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you got some value here today. We're not done with baguettes on this channel yet. In the next few videos, we'll do a little bit of baguettes focusing on a specific thing. And I hope you enjoy those too. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye-bye.